Phil's working on the Fusion Lodge formers, which Dave has made, cutting lightning holes and offering the formers up to mark off where the stringers will go. He's working on former number 30, which will form the right hand side of the doorway. Keith now has a mammoth job removing all the broken rivets and screws from the wing farm booms. He has found some of the holes are deeper and larger in size than original. John's still working on more repairs to the French wing form. Yeah, I just chain drilled it. Just it was just because I had that bit in there, yeah. it was just easier. It only took me about five minutes just to change yeah. a little. Yeah. And then um, there'll be uh, an insert goes in there. And then obviously that's not cut to size yet, but then that will go over the top there. Yeah. Um, to finish it off. John's working on the rear turret of the Doncaster fuselage. The two supports holding the rear turret support ring came out of Lancaster just game. They will have to be removed after all the skins in this area have been riveted in place and fitted back into just Jane ready for this year's taxi runs which start in April. Studs, nuts and bolts from the spa. I have to go back in the correct order because of the length. Just pull. Yeah, what it's saying is, is you've got a steel mandrel, and the end of the mandrel is like hair shaped, like teardrop. Yeah. So you've got a hollow rivet, and you feed, you get them in tube. They come up all in tube, and you feel the, feed the steel mandrel for them, and then load them into the gun. And as you pull it, <coughs> it pulls a set amount, and just pull through one rivet and all it does is it just swells that yeah and pull it through and then afterwards you've got the option of putting a pin in it oh, so, it, so there's no there's a head on it there is a head yeah it's, it, it looks exactly the same as that yeah a hollow rivet yeah oh, oh they count some of those and they're not yeah they're counting something yeah i just put a it's like a normal shaped rivet yeah but hollow and then once the mandrel pulls through it it flares it enlarges the rivet into the hole so it grips yeah and then what you do is if you if you need the rivet kind of watertight or whatever you can drive an aluminium pin in oh, okay. at the end of the pin it, it, it like straight and then the end that goes in is slightly tapered yeah so you push it into the hole and you hammer it in and it wedges it interference fit yeah into the actual rivet yeah. itself then if there's any protruding off all they do is just mill the top of it yeah these are the bomb door jacks both these are they yeah Jerb's working on the hydraulic bomb bay doors this was a pressure test which has failed, so it's got to be stripped down, as is that one. Is this Canadian or English? No, these, these are um, British. British, yeah. Yeah, a slightly different. I'll show you the one on the aeroplane in a minute. Right. Um, this is a different arrangement around here. It does exactly the same job, but it's uh, visually slightly different. What, what is that arrangement? What does it do? Well, we've got we've got the end cap 
here, which holds the whole thing in, and then you've got an inner nut. Which, yeah, I see. Yeah. Which carries seals to seal the ram. So as that ram passes through that assembly, these seals prevent leakage of the fluid out to atmosphere. Yeah. And then that arrangement there is your piston head, which sees, seals the oil from either that side or that side. So depending which side is pressurised, gives you your travel. Yeah. So what they did um, with the Canadian mod, they dispensed with these seals and fitted O-rings, much simpler, much easier. Yeah. So this is the one that came off. Those two seals then would be your would be the right seal and the left seal. They'd be kind of opposite the back, the way back, around. Yeah, they're back to back. These are the new ones. Yeah, back to back. So we've got that little fella. And that's all new. Then you've got that fella. Yeah. And that sits inside. Sits inside there. And that's held to place in place out on the bench with the gland nut. So you've got one assembly on that side of the piston head, mirror image the other side which gives you that symbol there. So the jacket will replace this this is the old one. Yeah. And it had what we call it's just a, a static leak or weep. So when the bomb doors are open, so the that would be this, the jack as you see here in this configuration. No hydraulic pressure in the system, but over a period of time you get a very small weep past the, past the seals, down the ram, trickle down the ram and you get a puddle on the floor. Yeah. As, soon as, you, as soon as the engine starts and you motor the hydraulics to open and close the bomb doors, it's fine. Yeah, the kind of seal grips the shaft then? Yeah, because you've got pressure behind everything. Yeah. The seal grips. So that's in for bay service now, as are the other two, hopefully. Yeah. We can get those cleaned up, resealed, and then pressure tested, and they'll, they'll yeah. go into, uh, into yeah. stock then. Which ones will you, does it matter if you use the Canadian ones when it comes to an airworthy standard? No. No. no the paperwork will it reflect that. Yes. Yeah. So that's not yeah. No. Make our life easier. Yeah. Yeah. So all there is, all it is, is if you if you look at that now. Yeah. Take a pic. Oops, take a picture of that. Yeah. And then we go out to the aeroplane. Yeah. Oh. Amateur to yeah. accommodate that internal end cap. Yeah. That is the Canadian jack. So, as far as outward ident uh, appearances are concerned, absolutely identical until you look up there. Yeah. See where my finger's going? Yeah. So it's recessed, the end cap is recessed. Whereas if you look at that jack there, yeah, the sports index. Oh, it yeah. seems to be a bigger diameter there. It's just it? a slightly different design on the on the yeah. body of the jack. Yeah. So they've machined. But that's a larger diameter to yeah. accommodate that internal end cap. Yeah. There you are, mate. Yeah. No, a bit more now. Yeah. And a oh. clean water boot. Right? Yeah. No, last week when I came, that was the hand pump. Oh. And there's a bit. There's a little hand pump there. Were you bleeding them then? Yeah, pumping the fluid through. So it's it's air. It's it's the ball chattering inside the, the 
As you bring the handle one way, one ball will unseat and allow fluid to be drawn in. Yeah. And as you move the handle the other way, that one sits and another one opens to force the fluid out. Yeah. So the, we were pumping, you're bleeding away. pumping the fluid after topping the reservoir up, pumping the fluid from the reservoir through the system, through this flap selector, down into these pipes, and then bleeding both sides yeah. of the ram. These pipes look quite heavy, so they must hold a lot of hydraulic oil, the system then. Uh, the big diameter. Yeah, they're, they're not the actual, they're not proper, these aren't the proper um, pipe lines. No. They're, they're rubber hoses. Oh, I see. And they were just installed to get the system working. What you should have, aluminium alloy, rigid, yeah. rigid piping. So eventually this will go, get ripped out, and I'll make the new pipes in accordance with the drawings and the proper specs. Yeah. So she'll have the correct pipe in. Yeah. Would that self-bleed with it being lower? Would the air come out of it? You know how sometimes on the old car brakes, yeah. if you left it overnight, you it, would... It would tend to, it would tend to pull. Yeah. As it were. So that, obviously that's why they've got the, the grease nipple at the highest point. So for that side of the piston, the, the nipple's up there on the end of my finger. Yeah. Can you see it? The new one there. Yes, I can, yes. And then obviously for this side, because the, when you extend the ram, the piston head's down here. So any air is going to be yeah. hopefully in there. Yeah. On an airworthy lane, each inboard engine has a hydraulic pump, which is that one there. So that's your general services pump. This is this one near the copper pipe. That's it, it? Yeah. 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 So each inboard engine drives one of those pumps. Yeah. So that powers your undercarriage, your flaps, your bomb doors. Yeah. Uh, and then a wartime lane, it would have been your fuel jettison. And then your um, car, hot cold air. Oh, would it? Yeah. Which we Look. don't obviously won't have. No. And we won't have fuel jets, and so it'll be bond doors, undercarriage, flaps. Yeah. The same hydraulic oil, which is very inflammatory. The condition of hydraulic oil is that it should be as, as near flame resistant as possible for yeah. obvious reasons yeah yeah because i know if you spilt hydraulic car oil on your exhaust and the exhaust was off she could quite easily ignite without a flame yeah but these are this oil is a bit different is it aviation hydraulic oil by its nature has got to be as intrins intrinsically safe as it, as it can physically make it yeah, yeah. So it has to, it has to for, depending on its use, I mean for the civil aviation and the, and the military fast jets, you need stuff that can operate at really high temperatures. Yeah, and high pressure or as well. At high altitude in very low temperatures. Yeah, yeah, because that is... Without resorting to sludging or freezing as well. Yeah. All time lengths, the, especially the rear gunner, he used, to, he used to have to keep his turret motor in to help stop the oil freezing, you had to continually motor the tire. Yeah. This is the inboard wing rib. You can see the wide heads are the corroded rivets. This will have to be totally dismantled. Ben, the electronics engineer at East Kirby has got a new video out. It shows where the fuse box has been reinstalled back into the Lancaster. I put a link below in the description area, just above the comments.